In this video, I want to talk about the intuition behind instrumental variables estimation. And I'm also going to go ahead and derive the instrumental variables estimator for the case of a bivariate model. OK, so just to remind ourselves of the problem which we introduced in the last video, we have some sort of model which is yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus ei. And the problem here was that the omitted factors or the sort of various factors which are contained within this error were correlated with x, which meant that if x changes, there were two ways which y was changing. One was through x and the other was due to these sort of factors contained within the error here. So the problem here is that if we were to go ahead and estimate our sort of beta by looking at the change in y divided by the change in x, then the problem here is that the change in y is composed of two different parts. There's the change in y which is due to x and then there's the change in y which is due to the sort of error term. And on the bottom, I've still got dx here. So, and just in case you don't know, the delta just means change in that particular quantity. So the sort of first term which we get here is the change in y due to the change in x. And then we've got the sort of second term here, which is the change in y due to the error divided by the change in x. So it sort of becomes evident when we sort of think about least squares estimators like this that in general the least square or the expectation of the least squared estimator is not going to be the true population parameter beta. Okay, so that's the problem. How do instrumental variables get around this? Well, the idea is that if we can find some third variable, which I'm going to call z, which is correlated with x, so let me just write z here. So the idea is that changes in z are associated with changes in x, but importantly, are not associated with changes in the error term, then the idea is that if z changes, this causes x to change, which causes y to change. But the only reason which y is changing is due to changes in x. So we don't, we're not getting the sort of confounding situation due to changes in y because of this particular error term here. Or another way of thinking about this particular instrument is that the only way that this instrument affects y is through x. So let's think about a particular example. Let's say that let's say z increases by one unit. And if z increases by one unit, perhaps that causes x to go up by 0.5 units, which in turn causes y to go up by two units. So what would be the instrumental variables estimate for the parameter beta in this circumstance? Well, the answer is that the instrumental variables estimator for beta in this circumstance would be the change in y, which in this case is 2, divided by the change in x, which is 0.5. So that would be 2 divided by 0.5, which is 4. So the instrumental variables estimation, uh, estimate rather for beta would be 4. Another way of thinking about the instrumental variables estimator is that it's looking at changes in y which are solely due to changes in x. So it's kind of looking, it's like there are many factors which affect y, but it's looking at the variabil variability in y which is only due to the changes in x. And in that way, it gets around the problem of sort of these omitted factors causing changes in y because in theory, we're not considering them. Okay, so how do we go ahead and actually derive the explicit form of the instrumental variables estimator for the case of a bivariate model? Well, the idea is that we take the covariance of both sides of this equation with our instrument z. So the left-hand side is that we have the covariance of zi with yi. And from the right-hand side, we know that this has to be equal to the covariance of zi with just replacing yi by this stuff on the right hand side, we have sort of alpha plus beta xi plus ei. And we can simplify this expression on the right hand side a bit. So we have that this is equal to the covariance of zi with alpha plus beta times the covariance of zi with xi. Oh, let me just rewrite that zi with xi. 
plus the covariance of zi with ei. Right, so those are all the terms on the right hand side. We can simplify this even further. We know that the covariance of a random variable with a constant is just zero because the constant doesn't vary. And furthermore, our sort of first assumption from uh, our instrumental variable is that the covariance of our instrument z with the error has to be equal to zero. Remember we sort of stated that in saying that if z changes, then this shouldn't be associated with any changes in the sort of omitted factors, which we call sort of ei. So another way of stating that is the covariance of zi with ei is equal to zero. So if we have a good instrument, this second term vanishes and we're just left with this sort of middle term on the right hand side. In the next video, we're going to complete our derivation of the IV estimator for the case of a bivariate model. I'll see you then.